Thanks for watching the Piper Report. We appreciate you tuning in to watch this news program. I'm Zachary Knudsen reporting from Old Maine. Stay tuned as we cover the reasons why Pipers are giving things this Thanksgiving weekend, as well as a look at some exciting news from the Hamlin Golf Club and a look at a feature from a Holocaust survivor. All this coming up. Thanks for joining me. I'm Katie Drews and I'm here in front of the Claw Center where on Wednesday, November 7th, Hamlin hosted Holocaust survivor Henry Greenbaum. Mr. Greenbaum addressed an audience of over 300 members of the Hamlin community and spoke about growing up as a Polish Jew during the times of the Holocaust. Afterwards, I had a chance to sit down with him and ask him why it was so important for him to speak about the Holocaust to college students all over the world. Uh, we thought, we think that by us talking to you guys from the college or any students in middle school, high school, that you will carry the flight on for us, remembering what happened, that you should never forget. And maybe the only way they could stop it from doing is by us telling what happened. Well, in general, I hope everybody likes to listen to a survivor speak and tell the story, what happened. Maybe we can stop it from happening again to other human beings. Mm -hmm. By us telling the story, what happened to youngsters or college graduate or middle school or high school, it makes no difference because someday you will remember that and you'll tell your children to remember it. Because six million were murdered, innocent people, a million and a half children, then other than the, because they were Jews. We promised each other on the death march for three months that if you survive, make sure you tell what they did to us. Because we thought somebody might be alive. Or maybe we'll all be wiped out, but by talking to one another, telling him, keep it going. Remember what they did to us. Tell what they did to us. Maybe you know, perhaps that, that can help from happening again. Mr. Greenbaum returned the next day after his speech to speak with Carrie Ricksmeyer's Holocaust FISEM. Students in this FISEM will be traveling to Germany over J term to visit memorial sites and to gain a broader insight into the Holocaust. Day on November 15 was a 24-hour fundraising marathon to support over 4,000 Minnesota nonprofit organizations and schools. Thanks to everyone who donated to Hamlin for a gift to the Mass Day. Hamlin was ranked sixth among colleges and universities in Minnesota, with more than 150 people donating over $27,000. That money helps fund scholarships and financial assistance for students, as well as create hands-on learning experience, including internships, research, and club shifts. The school is a big success, and again, thank you to everyone who helped support Hamlin. I'm here inside the Walker Field House, where on December 1st, Foundations of Management students, led by Professor Peggy Andrews, will be hosting a dodgeball tournament for charity. All proceeds will go to Children's Hospitals of Minnesota. I spoke with student Courtney Benson to get details on the event. As part of our lead project, we have organized a dodgeball tournament, where all proceeds will be donated to Children's Hospitals of Minnesota. We invite anyone 18 or older to play on December 1st, starting at 4 p.m. We will have door prizes, concessions for sale, and there will be a prize for the team with the best uniform. If you register before Wednesday, November 28th, you can get up to $2 off your registration fee. So come over to the Anderson Center any day between 11.20 and 1 p.m. Or look for our Facebook event page, Dodge 4, as in the number 4, Children's, and register today. The most of you know that the holiday season is fast approaching, kicking off on November 22nd with Thanksgiving. We recently asked some Pipers about what they're most thankful for during this time of year. I'm thankful for my family um, having a stable job and a chance to get an education. I'm thankful for just the great people in my life that surround me every day. I mean, they just make everything so much easier. I'm just, you know, thankful for everything I have to be able to be at school, um, to, for, to be able to go home for the holiday and spend it with my family because I'm from out of state. I'm thankful for my family, my friends, good health, and the chance to get education as well. I'm thankful to be a part of two college athletic teams because it's allowed me to like be friends with a lot more people that I probably would have never met. And I'm thankful that I got to live close to home this whole time that I get to go to college. Um, I'm thankful I get to live with my dog that I've had since eighth grade. 
and I'm just thankful for all the experiences that I've gained at Hamlet. Sports fans, I'm Mira Mishik here to update you on what your Hamlin athletes have been up to. This weekend marked the season opener for both men and women's basketball. The women's basketball team traveled to the Wisconsin Lutheran Tournament, where they fell short to Wisconsin Lutheran on Friday and again to Wisconsin South on Saturday. Their next game will be against St. Vens on Wednesday the 28th. Men's basketball won their first game of the season against Wisconsin Lutheran. 92 to 86 in overtime. Noah Geary led the Pipers with 20 points, and Dior Ford was a close second with 19. They have another home game this Tuesday at 7 p.m. against Wisconsin Eau Claire. Although men's hockey lost both games this weekend against St. Olaf, freshman winger Brandon Zern continued to make a name for himself by scoring one goal and assisting a second on Friday night. And on Saturday, goalie Matt Hemingway recorded 25 saves for the Pipers. The men will look for a win with two home games against Forest Lake this weekend. Women's hockey also played against St. Olaf this weekend. They tied their first game but lost the second. Their next game is this weekend at home against Bethel. Be sure to come out and support all of your Hamlin athletes. You can also follow Hamlin Athletics on Facebook or Twitter, hashtag GoHU. University Golf Elite, otherwise known as HUGE, and already they've experienced success. The first tournament HUGE participated in was a local qualifying tournament for the 2012 National Collegiate Golf Championship, which was held at the University of Minnesota campus. HUGE sent co-founder of the club, Mandy Wardez, and club member Harley Thompson to compete. A first place win in the local qualifying tournament propelled Harley and Mandy to the championship in Las Vegas, where they competed against 41 other pairs made up of students, faculty, and community members from select universities across America. I sat down with one of the co-founders of HUGE to learn more about the new club. We went through um, something called IGA, Intercollegiate Golf um, Alliance. Uh, we signed up our team and realized that there was a tournament in the um, Minnesota area. We were like, okay, um, Sims, we're just a starting club. We didn't expect to do so good. We were like, oh yeah, we'll send a couple of teams there. We talked to some people um, on the team to see if their availability would be able to fit the one o'clock time. Um, a couple of them did, so we said, okay, you two are going to be going to this tournament um, and they did and as we know they won <laughs> um, and the person I believe Lamar pointed it out to us he's the one who basically looks um, to see what tournaments are out there um, what different things that we can be able to play and that can put our name um, on the block basically and to make sure that we're doing the best that we can since this year it's our, like our trial year to see if we're doing good or if we're not Thanks for watching the latest episode of Pepper Report. We hope you tune in next time to watch us. And as always, if you have any suggestions, please email us at mediarelations at hamlin.edu. Clear eyes, full hearts. Go Pipers. We'll see you next time.